Hello and welcome to the Baldwin Run Room Schoolhouse here at Bonneville Mill County Park. We have been transformed to the 1870s here in this classroom. And as you look around, you might have a chance to see things that look similar or things that look different compared to what you have in your classroom today. In this video, we're gonna explore some of those things that are the same and some of those things that are different. And what you might find is even though they may look different, they operate the same exact way. So not much has really changed when it comes to the way a classroom operates. So let's take a really close look at this classroom. You might be looking around and you might see things that you might have in your classroom today. For example, uh, the big thing are desks. Every student had a desk. Uh, they're all four, you'd come in every day, you'd sit at your desk and you would go through your lessons. The teacher has their own desk. You can see it up here. It's elevated so everybody can see it, so the teacher can see all the students when they're instructing and teaching. There's some things that ha this building has that you might not see in your school, but it's a very important part. Like, for example, this stove. This stove keeps uh, this building nice and warm during the winter months. There was a fire built inside it in the morning. They'd have to keep putting logs in to keep it nice and warm. The smoke would go out this black smoke smokestack to outside. It was also used for food and lunch. So for example, if you brought a lunch that you need to warm up, uh, they could be placed on top of the stove and be warmed up. Or for colder months, if the teacher was drinking coffee or tea, they could put a kettle on there and make everything warm up. Now, some things that are also similar that we're gonna take a closer look now at are at these desks, and we're gonna to explore to see all the materials that a student would have in their desk and what they would use to study, to write with, all those different types of things. There's some similarities and there's some differences. So if we were to explore what's inside these desks that students used every day, you might find some things that you'll find in your desk back in school or at home if you're learning from home. So let's take a look inside and see what we have. So first off, ah, we have our textbook. So this is called the McGuffey Reader. It was used with, a, with schools all across the country. This particular version is the third reader. So this would be for a student that's in third grade. So they had, all the, they had McGuffey Readers for the littlest students all the way up to the eighth grade. So depending on what grade you were learning in, depended on what reader you pulled from. So inside this book, you can see there's, if we go on the table of contents, there's a number of different things to read from. Uh, and this is where you would learn about things like English and learn reading and writing. There may be some math problems, which they call arithmetic back then. So instead of having multiple textbooks like you may have, they only had one and it covered a variety of different subjects. So inside their desk, you'd always find your textbook. Let's see what else we have in here. Ah, so they needed something to write on. So say for example, they were doing arithmetic, math problems, and they needed to work out these math problems. This is what they would use. You might use a piece of paper and you might write with a pencil or a pen, or you might, during art, you might draw on a piece of paper using markers or crayons or paint. Uh, students back then, this is what they had. They called it a slate board. It looks like a chalkboard, but they called it a slate board back then. So this was their writing utensil, and this is what they wrote with. Now what they used to write with is this. And I'll hold it so you can see it here. So this is called a slate pencil. So it looks like, almost like the slate board that they are writing with. And if you thought that, you'd be correct. So what they're using is they're using slate, which is a type of rock, to not only write with, but also to write on. So what they are doing when they're using slate pencils is they're actually scratching pieces of rock, and that's gonna create what kind of looks like chalk when we write on it today. So let's use this for example. So as I was saying before, they would use this to do arithmetic problems. So let's just say that I was going to do simple math. And I wanted to add four plus four. And that will give me the answer of eight. So it might be hard to see. I'll hold it up to the camera so you can look really closely. You can see how they would write on it. Uh, and then when they were done, because this is the only thing they had to write on, 
uh, until, their hand, until their penmanship was good, which we'll talk about in a second. They needed to erase this, and all they had was a simple rag. So you'd erase this, and you can see, ta-da, the slate is now empty, and we can rewrite again. Now, that's what you would have in every desk. That's what students would have in their desks, and that's what they'd come to school with every day. Now, older students, uh, you can, when their penmanship was good, when they could write perfect block lettering and cursive, because that was a big thing in the 1800s. All the students needed to learn how to write cursive. They could start writing on paper, so they didn't have to use a slate anymore, they could use paper. And if you look closely, you'll see at the top of my desk there's a little circle. What that circle is used for is it's, for, it's an inkwell. So what they would do is take a bottle of ink, and they'd place it in there, and then they would use pens that kind of work like a paintbrush, where you dip it in the ink and you write your letters, and once it started to dry out, you dip it again. Now that was only if your handwriting was good. If your handwriting was not good, the teacher did not give you permission to write, so you had to make sure you had very good handwriting. But as you can see, this is what would be in a student's desk that went to a one-room schoolhouse like the one we have here. Think about in your classroom what you have in your desk. Are there things that the, are the same? Are there things that are different? The answer is probably yes to both. So think about that and maybe you can discuss it with other, some other of your classmates and come up with different things that inside your desk is different and the same. Probably the biggest difference of a one-room schoolhouse compared to schools today is the students that would be in one classroom. Now, if you've looked very closely and you've examined all these videos and if you've looked at the desks, you might notice something. In the front here, these desks are really small. But as you go back in the classroom, these desks get really big. And the question is why? Well, it leads me to talk about the students that were in this classroom. So today, in a school today or a class today, there's only one grade. So you may go in one room in a school and you might just have all third graders or you might have all fourth graders and so on and so on. The biggest difference is in one room schoolhouses, there were first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades all being taught in one room at one time by one teacher. Imagine how hard of a job that would be. And that's why these desks are small. So if I were to try to sit here in the front, I have a hard time even fitting in here because I'm an adult. But this, do, this desk would be for someone maybe in first or second or maybe even third grade. So if I can get out. <laughs> if we move a little bit further back, these desks get much bigger. So I can sit may, much more comfortably in here. So this might be for the seventh or eighth graders as well. So in this room is the same thing as an elementary school or a middle school and a junior high, all wrapped into one classroom, all being taught at the same time. So that's probably the biggest difference of the experience of a one-room schoolhouse compared to today. Here's one big difference, and you will see those differences right behind me, above me, on either side. In a one-room schoolhouse in the 1870s, here in this part of Indiana, you would see three portraits on the wall. So the first one over here, you can see is of George Washington. George Washington would have been seen, uh, his portrait would have been seen in schools all across the country. George Washington was the first president of the United States. He was a leader during the revolution and he was seen as the father of our country. So all across the United States, you would see pictures, uh, portraits of George Washington in schoolhouses. The second photo or portrait you're gonna see over there is of Abraham Lincoln. Now, the reason Abraham Lincoln would have been in schools across the country, a portrait of him, was this is the time we're talking about is the 1870s. The Civil War ends in 1865. And just like today, as we look back in history, we think of Abraham Lincoln as being one of the best presidents, uh, if not the best president in the history of the United States. So he was so revered and so respected and so loved, and people wanted to remember President Lincoln. So in schoolhouses across the country, you would see portraits of Abraham Lincoln. Now the third portrait's a little tricky. And the reason is, is because that one would always be changing. So currently we have, in our schoolhouse, we have President Grant, Ulysses S. Grant. 
Ulysses S. Grant was a general during the Civil War, and in the 1870s, he is the president. So that's why it's tricky. The portrait, the third portrait in a classroom, you'd always see George Washington, you'd always see Abraham Lincoln. And then in this classroom, during this time period, during the 1870s, you would see Ulysses S. Grant because he is the current president. So that one would always be changing. So whoever was the president at the time would be the person that was the third portrait that would be hung in the schoolhouse. So uh, also you're gonna see an American flag. I'm sure many of your classrooms have American flags as well. It's what, when we would say the Pledge of Allegiance, we would stand and face. And uh, this is one way to show how culture has expanded in the United States during this time and how this is an easy history lesson because whatever schoolhouse you went to during this time, you would see these presidents and you'd see a symbol of our nation. So that might be one big difference. You may not have a, a portrait of the president in your classroom, but in the 1870s, you would have. So we've gone over some similarities and some differences. I hope you have a chance, you've had a chance to kind of look around during this video and you might notice some things that we didn't talk about. So as you can see, there are a lot of things that are the same, but there are a lot of things that are different too. We can also explore some things that are similar and different by not just the way the classroom looks, but by the students who went there, what their day was like. A school day for them looked very similar to ours. It would start in the morning, maybe 8 o'clock or 8.30 in the morning. It would go through most of the morning. They would stop and eat lunch and have time for recess so the students could get outside and run around when the weather was nice. When the weather was bad in the winter months or if it was raining, they would stay inside. And then they would finish their day uh, here in the classroom, finishing up their study. So a regular classroom schedule was similar to what we do today. Now the biggest, another huge difference was how students got here. So think about how you get to school. Some of you might walk to school. Some of you might ride your bikes. Some of you might take a bus. Maybe your parents or your friend's parents or your grandparents or someone drives you to school. So there's a bunch of different ways to get to school. In the 1870s, there was really only one way to get to school, and that was walking. So boys and girls that went to the school walked. And because there was first through eighth grade, you were probably walking with a lot of your brothers and sisters. You might walk past a neighbor's house and they might be going to school as well, so you walk with them. So all the students had to walk to get here. Now, they weren't walking very far. There were hundreds of one-room schoolhouses all across the country, so you weren't very far away from a one-room schoolhouse. A small community might band together and build a one-room schoolhouse. Uh, farmers might pool all their money together and build a one-room schoolhouse, so you're never that far away. But you had to walk to get here, as opposed to today where many of us either take a ride in a car or we take the bus to school. So those are some of similarities and differences in the history of schools compared to a one-room schoolhouse compared to schools today. I hope maybe you and your fellow classmates, along with your teacher, can think about and discuss other ways that the one room schoolhouse is different. But uh, for the end of this video, you can see that some things have changed, but some things haven't. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.